there's so much psychological trauma in trying to make sure it doesn't happen. And we are on the streets in our homes, fearful of crying. Now, what's happening in the mind of the person who is working a crime out, who is planning something illegal? Parents, there needs to be that balance of punishment and reward. We need to recognize that once there's a punishment, there is a space for reward. Because the child needs to know that there is some kind of recompense in terms of how you are seeing them differently from that position of disobedience or home crime, where they did something they should not have done. How do we set that standard again? It's important for us to really zero in to find out what they're saying, especially to kind of sift out the negative context that we're that we going to have. When a child takes my lunch, am I having a recompense? I go to the teacher. What I could do? I maybe teach my fine lunch or not fine lunch. But my lunch has gone, eaten. And then I've, I'm given no, an empty lunch pan. Tell me, how do I work that out? How? How do I work that out? Silently saying, I'm going to get at you one day, silently try to find a way where I can work this particular act for my gain. I want us to really begin to assess this. So these are questions you need to ask. These are conversations we need to have. By the time the child reaches to secondary school, you need to have these conversations because they are more formed and forged. And we hear the word bullying much more. And bullying is a very important precursor that we need to look at in terms of crime. How does a child overcome that pressure of bullying? Now, I'm not saying it starts at secondary school. It may have started in primary. It may have even started in kindergarten and you didn't know the word bully at that time. But by the time you got more wise and more educated and reached primary school and reached secondary school, ah, there's a whole different kettle of fish here. I want to react. I want to know what's going on. How do I get it? This one steal my lunch kit. This one stole my lunch money. This one stole my lunch my bag or took my book. I need to find out a way to get to that person. So we, 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 we must have these conversations at home, mainly around the lunch table or the dinner table at night, or even just having a conversation at a family meeting to hear the, the hearts of your children. Now, you have to learn, therefore, how to get the trust of your children at that point in time when they can share negatives without being flogged or punished. And that's why punishment and reward is so important. If I were to tell daddy or mommy, I was thinking, oh, it might be so aghast, I'll be punished for the thought that I have to avenge my own, being myself of being bullied. So again, you have as parents 
to think about the whole issue of punishment and reward. Because you can't want your children to trust you if they're going to be tell you negative things and you're going to be behaving more negatively with them. Are we prepared to hear negative things and respond positively and even reward our children for coming to share? It's important for us to decide that. Otherwise, we are not going to have a very decent future. Jane, Dora, Jack, how was your day? What did you do? Oh, I was thinking of beating a boy. What? No, 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 no. It's what? Say, okay, I hear you. Why were you beaten? Why did you want to beat? What prompted that? That's the way to engage the children. That's the way to engage your teenagers. Because you want them to trust you, to share the information that they have in their minds that are negative about regaining a position of confidence and control in their environment, in their school, that would not be accounted for bullying. How do we work that? What are we saying? How do we develop that confidence? Do you want to develop that confidence? I beg of you, parent. I beg of you, guardian. Because one of the things that are happening and what has happened over the years, siblings get together and have their own little party, their own little group sessions, and they share because they know they're not going to be flogged or going to be looked at dis disdainly. So you have to be careful here and understand that we are preventing crime. Oh, not my child. Hey, hold on, preventing crime. If you are saying that, you must say that with knowledge. Having served your child the opportunity of conversations within your family community. The other thing about the prevention is how you speak about punishment without your children, without you knowing your children are hearing you. If that was me, I would have. If that was my child, if your child eavesdrops that conversation, that con your child is not talking to you. So we must be careful how we talk about crime or bullying or things that are negative in the home. We have to be careful that, let's just simply say, that the children are around. If you want to talk about that in your bedroom or in the car with you and your wife or your spouse alone, fine. But you have to be careful of saying things that your children can eavesdrop and will affect their response to you to create a balanced and productive community.